Are you ready to bust another voiceover myth? Well, I'm glad you've joined me this morning because I'm on a tear this week. That's what we're going to do. We're going to destroy another voiceover myth, especially for those of you who are new or newbies or rookies in voiceover. I'm Bill DeWeese. How are you doing? I'm a voiceover, uh, professional voiceover talent. I've been doing this for 18 years. I'm a voiceover coach and a voiceover demo producer. And every weekday morning, we get together for a few minutes to chat voiceover, see what's going on, share tip, trick, strategy, something to motivate you, move you further down the road to being more profitable, to making more money as a voiceover talent. And uh, man, I, I got to be honest with you, I'm, I'm just so tired of hearing what voiceover talent can and can't do, the rules that are put down by the voiceover establishment, by voiceover establishment. It's like the voiceover man is trying to bring us down. And uh, <laughs> And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm poking a little fun at it and, and maybe I'm being a little melodramatic, but you know, the reality is these myths that are continually perpetrated really hurt and destroy early, you know, careers that are people who are trying to get traction and make things happen. And you hear all these, this nonsense, you know, yesterday we talked about uh, my anti niche approach to marketing and the, you know, the, the notion that. Um, and, and you guys, I mean, thanks for the comments yesterday and the feedback. I mean, you know, I heard it time and time and time again. Yes, that's what I've heard. Yes, that's what I've heard. And those of you who've been around long enough now know that's not the way things work. You know, do you have to determine a niche before you can be successful? No, you don't. Do you have to go out and buy a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar microphone to be successful in voiceover? No, you don't. Do you have to, to get an agent to be successful, successful in voiceover? My goodness, I would argue just the opposite. That can be one of the biggest hindrances to your career. Um, and we could go on and on with that. But today, let's let's talk about something else. And here's what got me thinking about this. You know, I'm a Cincinnati Reds baseball fan. I love, I've loved the Cincinnati Reds since I was just a tiny little guy. And uh, I watch them every chance I get. Last night, I was watching them play in uh, Kansas City against the Royals. And uh, if you follow the Reds at all, and you don't have to be a baseball fan to, to understand the analogy, but this is a rebuilding year, meaning they've lost a lot of their better players, experienced players, all-star players. They brought in a, a bunch of, a lot of kids, young guys. They're, uh, they're one of the youngest teams on average in baseball, lots of rookies. So nobody has high expectations. It's a rebuilding year. It's not a championship year. Nobody's expecting that. Nobody's expecting lots of wins. We're expecting to get to get experience and develop. Well, the Reds have flipped that script because these guys, they just don't give up. These kids just go out there and they grind and they work and they encourage each other and they win ball games. They're an extremely competitive team this year. And, and night after night, it's it's amazing to what, you know, every game they win, you would think they won the World Series. That's how excited these kids are. And it got me thinking about voiceover and, you know, you hear me talk a lot about setting expectations and it's true. If you, if you've ever thought this thought, how hard could that be? You probably should rethink that approach to voiceover because it's work. I mean, if you don't think it's, it takes some work and there's not some blood, sweat and tears that go into it, you're sadly mistaken. But does that mean that a newbie, does that mean that a rookie in voiceover cannot be successful? Absolutely not. And it really, this all comes from a, a mindset that was rightfully developed decades ago. Back in the day, I mean, back in the day, there weren't nearly the number of voiceover opportunities available that there are today because, again, technology is cheap, media is cheap and easy to create. There's just the explosion of media creation is just mind boggling. And it's created so many more opportunities for voiceover work. A lot of a lot of entry level work, meaning that before, you know, you go back 20, 30 years, you want to you want to get voiceover work. It's it was a far more competitive field because there were far fewer jobs. And those were, you know, were the only people that were going after it were people who were pretty seasoned for the most part. And and, you know, they're the only ones who who survived and stuck around because, again, it was an extremely competitive industry. Um, and so if you wanted to jump in as, as a new person, you had to understand that it probably was going to take a pretty long while for you to break through. Today, it's a totally different, people who are, who are, who are repeating that, that line, that philosophy, they're dealing with, with a reality that was true decades ago, not with a reality that's, you know, it's like, you know, playing records in, or CDs instead of listening to digital music in the cloud. I mean, it's, 
we're at a whole different place in history. That reality does not exist anymore. And the opportunities, especially for new folks who are just getting started, what I call entry-level work, um, it's, it's never been like this before. And it's creating opportunities for people who are, who are newer, people who are rookies, people who are newbies. So should you expect that you're going to immediately jump in and make a bunch of money? No, 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 no. It, that's not the way any career works. You don't have to, you don't have to work for it. But it does it mean that you can't start getting work like almost immediately? Certainly you can. If you're willing to do the right things and put in the and put in the blood, sweat, and tears to do it, you can start getting work very early on. And then from there you build, you build your career. But if somebody, and here, here's what re, I don't think there aren't many things that make me more angry than when I hear a voiceover talent tell me that a coach is saying, not yet, not yet. You're not ready yet. Not yet. Weeks go by. Months go by, years sometimes go by. Not ready yet. Keep coming back for more coaching. We're not quite ready yet. And let's assume it's done sincerely because they really don't feel they're ready. They're not ready for what? They're not ready for top tier national commercial work that only a, a fraction of a percentage of voiceover talent will ever get. Is that what they're not ready for? Okay, maybe not. But what about this large body of entry level work that's available? And beyond, I mean, it's all up the ladder. I mean, they're at every price point imaginable because it is a huge market. Come on, come on. If you're hearing that kind of nonsense, it's time to turn tail and go in another direction. You know, when I'm working with my students in my voiceover blueprint, what, <laughs> it's, it's interesting because my challenge is getting people to act. It's not holding people back. It's getting them to jump into the pond now, immediately. One of the most important things that you need to know and do when you're getting started in voiceover is you need to you need to get your demos and your profiles up, especially on the freelance sites like tomorrow, today, if possible. And you say, well, I'm not ready. I, I don't want to destroy my reputation. Oh, please. People who say that, who think they have a reputation to destroy, think that people are paying way more attention to them than they actually are. And as, you know, as a community of performers, maybe I, I kind of, I can understand where that's coming from. Nobody's sitting out there taking notes. Nobody remembers who I am. Nobody remembers who you are, except for the clients that you cultivate. And they will come to know you and love you and use you over and over and over again when you do well and you treat them right. So turn off the noise. Just turn off the noise because it is holding maybe you back. It's holding far too many back. And it's keeping uh, a lot of people who could be having very successful and fulfilling careers in voiceover from, from, from doing so. So let's, you know, bust the myths. If it, if it has anything to do with instilling fear in you or hesitancy, then it's wrong and you need to move on, move on because there's a lot of great stuff waiting for you in voiceover. And I don't want you to miss a moment of it. All right, guys, thanks for being here as always. Uh, boy, again, on my soapbox. Maybe it's maybe that's a function of getting older. I don't know because it seems like the older I get, um, the more I like to be on my soapbox. But there is just I just I think I have perspective with experience and time comes perspective. And as somebody who has a passion for helping people to be successful at what they do, when I see things that hold them back unnecessarily, you need to work for it. And you need I, I, I get that. Believe me, I understand that from experience and from working with hundreds and thousands of other people who are building, you know, building their voiceover careers as well. But uh, so, some of the nonsense that I see is just, it's mind blowing to me. Okay. We move on. Jump in this live stream chat now. Let me know who you are, where you're watching or listening from this morning. We'll do a little roll call and see what's going on. Albert in Lorraine, Ohio. Hey, Albert. Good morning. Stephen Oshkosh. Keep pushing, he says. Will do. <laughs> hey, Rob, good morning to you. Corey in Wisconsin. Uh, if you see me stretching my neck, it's because these are progressive lenses. So I have to progress to the very bottom to be able to read anything. Now on the tip of my nose. Let's see here. Rob, happy hump day to you in San Francisco. Oh, heading, uh, let's see here. Heading for a trip to Cincinnati to celebrate my grandpa's 96th birthday. Wow, that's fantastic! Well, congrats to your uh, your grandfather, and you enjoy enjoy this time with him. These these moments are special for sure. Phil in Tokyo, what's going on? Shannon in Odessa, Texas. Kenny, 
Good morning to you. Working in uh, College Park, Maryland for a couple days. Awesome. David, hello to you in Louisville. Rob, up early to, to catch my flight this morning. Uh, Neil, how are you in Fairfield? Eric, hey, from New York. You're always an inspiration when I really need it. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate that. Hey, Rusty, good morning to you in the UP of Michigan. Aaron in Como, Columbia, Missouri. Awesome. Bill in Boise. No, I'm sorry. It is Bill in Boise. <laughs> I thought you were saying Bill as in me. No, it's Bill as in you. Oh, hey, Bob in Reedsville, North Carolina. Sandra in Westerville, Ohio. Greg in Asheville, North Carolina. Craig, good morning to you in wet Wichita, which is a good thing. I know, right? I tell you, it has been so dry here in southwestern uh, Ohio. And this rain that we've had the past few days, uh, honestly, I mean, wish, I'm not a big rain fan, but when it gets dry, you, you know, you learn to appreciate what you don't have. And I wish we could, we could use a few more days of rain. John Rhinebeck, New York, Wayne in Olympic Mountains, James, it's, uh, oh, James is an American living in Vietnam, completed my first project on ACS and still dealing with rejection. Well, first of all, James, Vietnam, let's just say, I'm going to ring the bell for you. You got yourself uh, your first project on ACX. That's a, that's a big deal. And the rejection, yeah, you know, and James, here's the thing. And anybody who's done this for any length of time will, will vouch for this. VO is a game, much like baseball, of way more, way more rejection and failures than wins. Remember, you, you don't need to get, a, get on base every time you get up to bat. You only need to get on every now and then. And, uh, and if you do that, you're going to be okay. So you get, if you're not getting rejections, it means you're not doing anything. That, and that would be a bad thing. Good morning to Dave in the Big Apple. Dan in Clarkston, Michigan. Sherry in New York found a pair of noise reduction curtains to hang in my office. Awesome. I love it. Denise in Long Island, Curtis in Columbus, Georgia, MG in North Carolina, Oliver in San Diego, uh, Christine, Chicagoland, Eric in Richmond, Texas, Oregon's in the house this morning. We've got uh, Belinda here. Thanks for showing up for us. Niche is French for doghouse. Usually we try to stay out of that. <laughs> Usually we try to stay out of those. No, I hear you. That makes sense. Uh, hey, Dr. Bob, how are you doing in Clearwater, Florida? Thank you for the kind words. Hey, Damon. Awesome. Good. Glad to see you're, you're moving forward. Jorge says, great to listen to your advice. I've been in Fiverr for three years and it sure comes slow. So your mentoring is essential. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Jorge. Hey, Don, as a newbie, this morning's message is very motivating. Thank you. Tom, lurking from west of Indianapolis. Wally says, in Maryland, says, whatever it takes. Janet, good morning in Florida. Uh, let's see. Oops, the stream moved on me. Dang it. It likes to, if I don't move fast enough, it won't wait around for me. It just takes off. Sebastian in East Sussex, England. How are you doing, Sebastian? Thanks for being here. Um, we've got Tamara in North Dakota, Shannon in Virginia, Jack in Phoenix. Booking work. I love it, Jack. Congrats to you. Barb in Ann Arbor. Uh, let's see here. Scotty going to work in Brookings, South Dakota. Refer to this as the Daily VO Devo. <laughs> I love it. Uh, howdy, greetings from India. Big fan. Thank you so much, Subro. Um, tape and razor blades. Oh my gosh. When you say tape and razor blades, that brings back memories from a long, a long time ago in a land far away. And I'll tell you, I think I've mentioned this before. Just, just the thought of tape as a magnetic tape, recording tape, razor blades, grease pencils, splicing blocks. Uh, back in my, my radio broadcasting days. And here's, here's the funny thing. And like I said, I think I've mentioned this before, but it's, <laughs> you know, for those of you who struggle with digital recording, DAWs, Adobe Audition, Audacity, all that stuff, man, I was pulled kicking and screaming out of reel to reel tape into Adobe Audition back before it was Adobe Audition. It was called Cool Edit Pro before Adobe brought it. And the reason I didn't want to, to, to even though I knew all the benefits and been, you know, told why it was going to be so much better. 
I was really good at reel to reel tape. I was fast. I mean, I would work, I was working on the air. I was a production guy. I mean, I did production on air program. I did everything, but I, re I remember being on the air and I would take phone call. I would record phone calls during songs and I could take, I, you know, I have a three minute song on, I'm taking two or three phone calls and I'm taking a razor blade and a grease pencil and reel to reel tape. And I was editing phone calls to use on the air after the record was done. I mean, I was fast. I was really fast with that. And, um, the good news is I did switch. I was forced to switch, didn't want to switch, but I did. And within a few weeks I was up and running and rolling. And now I, you know, now I can't even imagine why I would ever want to use, you know, old technology. So the moral of the story is hang in there because that new, the new technology is pretty amazing. And when you learn it, you know, it gets really exciting. Amarillo, Texas, we've got Sherry. What's going on? You remind me of Jason Bateman. I get that a lot. I'm an, I'm a full, I'm an older, fatter Jason Bateman. I get a lot of looks from people. I can tell when I go into public places sometimes where it's like for a second, it's like they think they know, they know me or recognize me. And I'll, it's not because of this channel. Um, and, and I've had people come up to me and say, man, you look like Jason Bateman or, um, oh, who's the other guy? Um, oh, I'm blanking out. I'm a cross. I'm a cross between these two guys. He's an actor. Uh, was recently in that big snowmobile accident out in Nevada where he's run over by a snowplow. Uh, Jeremy Renner, that guy. I get a lot of that comment too. Uh, obviously, those guys are, again, far, they're younger and handsomer and thinner and all that good stuff. But um, I'm just, uh, th but thanks. You know, I appreciate that. Wade in Philadelphia, uh, we got Robert in Texas, Liz in Northern Illinois, Melissa in San Diego, Riley in Paris, Texas, James, thank you. Misty, just finished an audio book. Yeah, Misty, way to go. Makes me feel more accomplished when I can finish projects. Absolutely. Speaking of finishing projects, I've got some lined up for today. I hope you do as well. If not, market, market, and market some more. We'll catch you back here tomorrow morning. Have yourself a great day.